They gather outside the prison every day, mostly parents, desperately hoping for a glimpse of their children, proof that they are still alive. They know that behind these walls, Myanmar's military junta is engaging in unspeakable cruelty against those who dare to defend democracy. Now in hiding, this 19-year-old is brave enough to share his story with us. He says he was detained after being stopped by soldiers who found photos of him at protests on his phone. When we got there, the commander tied my hands behind my back and used small scissors to cut my ears, tip of my nose, my neck, and my throat. Then he let his fellow soldiers beat me up that night. He shares photos of the abuse. His back lacerated from whippings with a cable wire, his face swollen from endless strikes. I even told them to kill me instead of torturing me. It was that painful. Myanmar's junta shows no shame about its cruelty. On state television, it proudly displays images of those arrested for so-called terrorist activity. The face of this 31-year-old dance teacher is barely recognizable. Family members say this is what she looked like before the beatings. From the safety of neighboring India, this 23-year-old army cadet says the soldiers were only allowed to watch state TV. We have agreed not to reveal his identity for his protection. They tried to brainwash us. There are soldiers who only believe what the commanders told them. They don't think. Two years into his military career, he decided to defect, haunted by the military's brutality after the coup. Every night, he says they would set out on raids, armed with assault rifles and the names of protest leaders given by their informants. At one point, we went to arrest two leaders. One got arrested and one was trying to escape, and we shot him on the spot. We were ordered to shoot when they escaped. That night, he claims he intentionally broke his rifle so it wouldn't fire, but says it was the cruelty to the families of the protesters that finally broke him. They were crying when we raided their houses and beat them. The neighbors knew too, but no one dared to come out at night. If someone was looking at us through their windows, we told them to come out and beat them too. The youngest one I saw was around 10 or 11 years old. A boy. Despite the ferocity of the military's crackdown, Myanmar's pro-democracy movement is still very much alive. The young protesters' ordeal lasted three long days. During the endless beatings, he says he had one focus, staying alive so that he could protest once again. Jake, it's unclear how many soldiers have left the military if this is becoming more common, if more will follow suit. But one thing is startlingly clear, Jake, and that is that the violence continues despite the condemnations and with no end in sight. And Clarissa, President Obama just tweeted out a statement that, quote, the world's attention must remain on Myanmar and that he is, quote, appalled by the heartbreaking violence but it has to be asked why has the international community failed to de deal with this situation so listen it's complicated there isn't one sole reason but when it comes to the u.n security council russia and china have condemned the violence but they haven't condemned the coup and they refuse to support an arms embargo. If you look at this graphic, if we can get it up on screen, of weapons transfers to Myanmar, you can see who the biggest suppliers are to the military junta over the last 12 years by a mile. Now, that doesn't mean that Russia and China are only refusing to condemn the coup because they make money from the junta, but it underscores how deep those ties are. And CNN actually went to Putin's spokesperson and asked why Russia is continuing to sell weapons to the junta, whether it will continue to sell them. And he replied that while Russia is saddened by the loss of civilian lives, quote, Russia has longstanding traditional relations with Myanmar. We value them. And of course, we advocate for Myanmar to deal with its internal problems on its own. Yeah, you're, not, you're not really saddened by, by what's going on in Myanmar if you're continuing to give the military weapons to kill their civilian population.